Okay, this is uh, Paul Gregg. I'm going to talk about PVC conduit to hot sand bending. Yeah. I made some backyard roller coasters, and I want to document what I what I discovered on uh, bending the PVC pipe. So I think a lot of uh, people that make these backyard roller coasters uh, just take the straight PVC and start bending it off into the as they make the frames and uh, the trouble with that is if you have a lot of load on it in the pipe when you when you screw it to the frame then there's a lot of pre what what engineers call pre stresses at those joints and uh, it can build up uh, to be quite a bit and it makes it difficult it's just hard to do. So I thought uh, bending these into nice curves before assembling the track would be a good idea. And plus you can make more interesting track. You can make tighter bends. You can do anything you want to do. Uh, so uh, this was uh, during the building of my second uh, backyard roller coaster, uh, BYRC backyard roller coaster 3D, three dimensional dash 02, the second one. Uh, about a year yeah, in November 2014, maybe a little less than a year ago. And I used PVC Schedule 40 electrical conduit. Uh, you don't you don't want to use uh, PVC white plumbing pipe. It's not uh, resistant to ultraviolet radiation. I don't know how well the PVC conduit will hold up. It says sunlight resistant on it. I think the next time I do this, I have coated this with uh, Aerospace 303 UV protector. It's uh, Aerospace 303 is a product, a spray on product made for protecting composites in the aerospace industry. And uh, probably be a good idea to paint the, uh, the track before you assemble it, you paint the rails after forming. But I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just telling you what I did and uh, what I learned. I tried heat guns, and that really doesn't work that well. Uneven heating. You know, the, the, if you do heat it up, it locally ovalizes and buckles locally. And there is a, a resistance heated snake you can buy for $900 and put it in there. And, but still, when you bend it, it wouldn't uh, support it like sand does. I tried boiling water. It wasn't hot enough. You might use... You know, some I might try superheated steam, uh, steam that's hotter than 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but that sounds kind of dangerous. The hot sand worked really well. You get even heating, and uh, it stays round. So this is a spreadsheet I came up with with a simple. It's pretty simple, really, and that's one of the reasons I'm entering into this. I retired from Boeing uh, a year and a half ago and and uh, kind of wanted something to do and wanted to have fun with my grandkids. And I'm a, I was a research and development engineer and uh, this is the kind of stuff we did. Design it, analyze it, build it, and break it. Kind of a thing for airplanes and uh, and for defense things, missiles and fighters and space things too. So I was kind of in a general structures area that we did uh, research for future stuff. And, and uh, so those are my skills and uh, just trying to apply those. I've always been uh, interested in how you can model real life with math. And this is fairly simple stuff, but I think it's a good introduction for a lot of people that uh, thought math was boring in physics. And uh, we'll apply some physics and math here and and uh, I think you'll find it kind of interesting. It's not as hard as you think it is. Um, so my forms, I, I decided, you know, I did some two-dimensional drawings. You can, you know, I did some on paper and then in a computer-aided design program. Decided that I wanted uh, some different radiuses of my track. So this is a spreadsheet that kind of tells you the different radiuses. And uh, if you want to track bank angle and the the inside rail radius is a certain radius for a given bank angle and a certain track gauge you can just you can find out what the outer radius should be and uh, PBCs you can kind of bend it around and and do some tweaking 
but if you get them in the ballpark of the right radius, then uh, the pre-stresses once you're assembled are a lot less. So for this example, if the gauge is 15 and a quarter inches, all three of my my uh, roller coasters have different gauges, and I think this was the last or the small the smaller one I built. Uh, I think I have 17 inches, 16 inches, and then this 15 and a quarter inches for gauge. Gauge is the distance between the the, the two rails, center to center. Um, the inside radius 84 degrees, 84 inches. Sorry, and I'm working in inches here. I normally work in meters. I'll switch back and forth. I went to school and learned the metric system and they feel like it's superior, but then I had to work in the English system at Boeing. But uh, the metric system, especially when you're talking dynamics and some other things, it's uh, just a lot simpler and works out better and you don't have to convert inches into feet and that kind of stuff. Those conversions are a lot simpler. Uh, so in this example, 15 and a quarter inch gauge radius of the inner track, 84 inches, and then I have a track angle of 30 degrees. So it calculates that the outer radius, 19.207 inches, is what I should use. So basically I came up with three different radiuses, radii, for the for this one track. I, I think I have a fourth one uh, subsequent uh, later on. Um, so these these radiuses. So I need to build forms to, to put these on so that they, when they cool down, they're at the right radius. My 84 inch radius serves as the inner rail on the wider 30 degree bank curve. It also, it serves as the outer rail on a sharper 20 degree bank curve. So basically with just three radii, I can make two different tracks with two different curves with two different uh, track angles. Oh, the, the formula is pretty easy. You know, the outside radius equals the inside radius plus the track gauge times the cosine of the angle. And if you don't know trig, um, those of you that do, this is a really easy thing. If you don't know it, you should uh, look up uh, how to do a little bit of trigonometry. It, uh, and this is a good application of a very simple trigonometric function. So here's, uh, I put the forms on the wall, uh, just gravity. You don't really need a form on either side of the pot. Gravity kind of pushes it down. It, it'll Once it starts to droop down, it, it stays in place. You don't need anything special to, to keep it up there. This is a cradle, like just a temporarily made cradle out of two by fours screwed together. I apologize, this picture shows this already bent. This is the one I tried to bend. This is a pipe I tried to bend with heat guns and and later on after developing this I, I wanted to rebend it to a to a good shape so when I put the hot sand in it did flatten out and then I, I so basically you put the hot sand you cap one end you uh, get the sand hot you pour the sand in the top you cap the other end and then then pretty quickly you uh, pick the pipe up and move it over and stick it on the form and it just kind of droops down and makes a really nice radius. It makes as good a radius as you have made your form. So you need, to, for one 10-foot pipe that's inch and a half inner diameter, you need about 25 pounds of sand and you put it in shallow pans, put it in your oven or heat it any way you can up to maybe 400, 425, 450 degrees. And uh, in about an hour, the first time around, if the sand's already warm from a previous forming, then it takes less time. But you really need to be safe about this. You need uh, safety glasses on and, and oven gloves, not just welding gloves, not just leather gloves, but some real oven mitts uh, <clears throat> to do this safely in a long sleeve shirt. The sand, yeah, it's, it's not too dangerous, but if it's not comfortable if you're going to spill 400 degree sand on you. Um, so you want to be real careful about that. And I'm not telling you you should do this. I'm telling you this is what I did. I can't be responsible for what you do. Uh, the pipe holder, this little temporary cradle, should be as, at a pretty high angle. I think I had about 45 degrees, so the sand will um, run down it. And then you kind of jiggle it and, and tap it on the bottom. Uh, in between your pores. I, I had four shallow pans and I poured each one in there. It takes a couple minutes to do that whole thing and you got to be really careful. Um, 
The pipe, like I said, uh, as soon as it gets the sand in it, it the 400-degree sand heats the pipe up. And once it's about 170 degrees, it starts to really get limp. It's like a big noodle. And so you kind of want it in the form by the time it does that. So you, you want to get it over there. Um, if it gets too limp, you really need two people to, to carry it or it'll go all over the place. So... Um, In making these, these, this, this plywood thing that is hanging on the wall there, I laid it on the floor and then got a long string and a long two by four and attached one end of the string to a screw in the, in the two by four and then made a loop in the other end of the string with a Sharpie marker and made these uh, radius, these radii. You can see, you just make them with a big thing and then you put it on the wall and then I I uh, screwed these uh, three-quarter inch particle board strips uh, just so they are they match those radii and that makes a pretty good uh, a pretty good form you can see at the end end effects on these uh, boards mean that it won't it's really hard to curve the very end of the board and so there's a little bit of a straight part there but don't worry about that you can where the where the cap is. You can you can notch out notch it out a little bit so the cap will sit down and it makes your trigger your tolerances a little better. But it's all going to turn out pretty good. And there's a good reason for not having the end very end of the pipe uh, curved. It kind of makes a gradual transition when you go from a straight to a to a curved piece in your track. And then dynamically, that's a that's a good thing. So. Um, that's pretty straightforward. This is shows my four. I, I did finally end up getting some cookie sheets from a thrift store, and and that you want your sand to be maybe an inch thick. You don't want it to, you know, so that it heats up evenly. Um, I never ran my oven more than 450 degrees. If you were using Schedule 80 pipe, the thicker pipe, you might have to go. To, you probably would want to go with uh, higher temperatures, and that might be hard on your oven. So. Um, that takes some experimenting to get the sand into the pipe uh, get up on about two rungs on my ladder and pour the sand off the corner of the pan into this uh, copper sheet funnel kind of stuck in the end there and you could you could make this more elaborate elaborate and easier to use I could uh, I've tried a couple of things there but this copper sheet worked fine uh, so, like I said, in between pouring, you kind of I, I, I stack all four of these uh, and then carry them out to my garage. Um, and then one by one, I I, uh, I put them on a table and then one by one, I pull them up and, and pour the sand in there and kind of tap in between. I track the temperature then with a infrared no contact heat gun. That's a pretty cheap thing. Um, and uh, once the temperature is about 170, it starts to get really limp. 190s is very limp. So 180 is about 180 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is Celsius. You can do the conversion, but uh, 180 Fahrenheit seemed to be really optimal. So there's uh, four of the pipes. I was able to, you know, in a it takes about once you get going on it, and you have two batches of sand, one heating up while the other one's in the pipe cooling down. I uh, was able to make maybe one pipe every 45 minutes to an hour. I made 13 in a day and watched uh, some TV shows in between in segments. So uh, you can it, you can speed it up if you're going into production or something with a lot of different things, but uh, it worked pretty well. And you can see this is a picture of my my second track, and it has quite a bit of curvature to it. And worked really well. So uh, that's it. I'll try to make some other videos.